These are aggressive living things that have no idea what century they're in, and they'll defend themselves violently if necessary. Here's your look, guys, at the new Chronicle Collectibles Jurassic Park. This is the Crash McCreary's Baby Raptors. Crash rendered hundreds of drawings for Jurassic Park. One that was never fully realized in the film was this drawing of the baby raptors playing together shortly after hatching from their incubated eggs. Since the velociraptors were so terrifying in the film, maybe portraying them as cute, almost domesticated creatures wouldn't fit. Thankfully, Crash and Universal have allowed Chronicle Collectibles to create a three-dimensional product of this adorable artwork. This spectacular piece is slated to release Q1 2019, so it should be coming out any time now. Before we get this review underway, we're going to take the measurements for how tall the baby raptors stand. One thing I've decided to do for this review is to keep the baby raptors on my turntable, as I certainly would find it might be much easier to rotate it than be picking up a heavy base like this. By the way, the statue as a whole has a total weight of 17 pounds, just to give you an idea how big it is. So I'm going to take the tape measure, I'm going to put it right to the very top of the tallest raptor stopping the Ultra Metrotron 5000 right there. And of course, for the fact I've excluded the turntable underneath it. From the bottom of the base to the very top of the tallest Raptor, you're looking at a statue that stands 9.3 inches high. And we're also going to do the exact same thing for figuring how long this is as well. By the way, if you are also interested in finding out what this is in centimeters, you're looking at 23.8 centimeters tall or about 24 centimeters. We're going to switch this over once again to inches and we're going to take it from one end of the base because really the tail is past that. It's actually a deeper uh, me measurement there, but we're going to do it from the end of the base to the end of this raptor tail, the tallest raptor that we had already measured. So basically from here to this tail right here, you're looking at the statue lengthwise, looking at 20.6 inches long, which in centimeters, once again, centimeters, you're looking for this one at being 52.4, about 52 and a half centimeters long. This statue, might I also say too, is limited to only 300 pieces worldwide. I'll put the link down below and at the very end of this video as well, I'll mention again, if you guys are interested in picking this one up, very limited quantities over at Chronicle Collectibles at only 300 worldwide. I'm currently holding in my hands something just as impressive and of high value as the statue itself, and that is the signature of Crash. Crash has taken the time and signed all 300 releases of these on this front placard that you can put atop of the display stand. There's a good, there's a good space right there, for example, where I'll probably likely display the placard. And again, that will be sitting in front of the, uh, the Raptors here. 
The placard is made up of a silver metal here, still having a very rather familiar logo on the far left of the T-Rex. You've got Jurassic Park on the top, Chronicle Collectibles below that. Underneath the, uh, the display stand, you are treated to four felt feet, soft enough that if you are to be putting it on a surface like this, or if you want to be putting it, say, in the in the foreground with the raptors behind that at least whatever surface you're deciding to put this on the four felt feet will prevent it from scratching on any surface now mark crash mccreary always knew he wanted to do dinosaurs after graduating from the art center college of design in 1988 crash went on to work with some of the biggest names in the industry including stephen hawkins for predator 2 tim burton for edward scissorhands and james cameron for terminator 2 just after attaining an academy nomination for his makeup design for batman returns crash got the opportunity to finally work with steven spielberg on jurassic park now, I've taken the Raptors off just for a split second, just to show you the display base that they come perched on top of. It's basically just a black oval shaped base, but the reasoning why I wanted to take these off was to also show you this sequence, the limited edition release of, once again, 300 copies worldwide. This one just so happens to be 212 out of the 300 release. And on the underside, we've got Crash McCreary's Baby Raptors, Jurassic Park, and Jurassic World are trademarks and copyrights of Universal Studios and Amblin Entertainment Inc. Licensed by Universal Studios, all rights reserved. Down below, you've got the Chronicle Collectibles along with their website. You may want to make a note of www.chroniclecollectibles.com. Also, this large display base much larger than the placard stand, also does come with its own felt feet. Again, when you are putting it on the surface, you certainly don't want this scratching. The unfortunate of the unfortunate end of the display stand here is that it is a magnet for fingerprints. You can see that as I'm putting my fingers to it, it is leaving my fingerprint oil residue all over that. So periodically, as you certainly are going to be putting this on a display eventually, you may find yourself compelled if you are somebody that likes to go in there and just kind of pick up the statue periodically and move it. You may want to also make use of a cloth and just periodically, like I said, wipe that away. Because even as you can see right here, it is really a magnet once again for fingerprints if you are picking up the statue. I'm going to show you how these all are put into place, but I guess this would be a good opportunity to get a close-up look at the fantastic sculpt for starters and a fantastic paint job that Chronicle Collectibles has incorporated not only to this piece, but all the other pieces that we've looked at on this channel. Very quite obviously, there's a square peg and a dowel, a metal dowel that's going to be fitting into. It's actually going to be fitting over there, but again, I wanted to show you guys what it looks like first and foremost, and then we would certainly be going from there. Actually, I think the plug point is right there. One of the Raptors of the three trio uh, has its eyes closed. You can see that it's scratching the side of its head almost in the same way as a dog would scratch the side of its head. Although you may not want to be playing fetch with a baby raptor. Some awesome, fantastic airbrushing that's been added to really the transitioned areas of the skin here. On the underbelly of the raptor, you can see the almost like an elephant hide has been sculpted into not only really on the stomach itself, but really everywhere. I love the airbrushing that they've added around the eye section area as well, just to kind of give it that sense of depth. The claws, once again, uh, are very nicely done, much like the claw that's scratching into the side of its flesh. You can also see the extended out talons of something that would eventually be growing up and becoming a very deadly predator, to say the least. Uh, on the top there as well, you are treated to this diamond pattern of, of uh, shaped painted here onto the spinal section. It basically starts at the very top of its crest and works its way all the way down across to its tail. Fragile things to be noted here on all of the statue releases here. This one of the raptors is of smaller things such as claws. So the claws would be a little bit more sensitive. This is all, by the way, created using a high quality uh, poly resin. Uh, so again, it equals something that's very weighted, but also something that's fragile as well. So things also such as the tail are things that you want to be mindful of when you are picking up the statue. I probably would suggest maybe very carefully either pick, picking up all together or maybe take off the raptors if you are ever planning to move it somewhere.
And then again, you don't run the risk that if you pick it up, you accidentally clip a tail against something, because certainly this tail would be probably one of the first things that would be breaking on it. And just before we actually put the Raptor in place, wanted to spin this around and surprise you with the one open eye of the Raptor. Even though it is scratching the one side, you can see the other eye is almost very visibly staring right at you. A great job actually done on the eyeball. You can see the vein veins that have been done from the opened cornered socket of the eyeball on both sides there. The eye actually does a good job of attracting and reflecting off the light, giving a sense of life. Really do quite like that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to attach this. Once again, you are making use of a square peg and a metal dowel that's going to fit its way, plant its way into the provided holes on the, on the actual base here. I wanted to also start with this wrapper because I find it's the hardest of the three to put in place. Once again, you just put the dowel in first and then just sort of work your way down. I felt like there was a stopping point where it didn't want me pushing it any further. So reluctantly, I pushed a little bit extra weight on the front of the foot and the Raptor now is in place. The next Raptor we're gonna have a look at is the one that's laying down. Now this one is very visibly playful comparing to the other two Raptors. You can see both eyes in this instance are opened, one on this side, one on this side. And you can see that it's showing its visible belly as again like it's in play mode this is not maybe something that you would see too often once the raptors have grown up become full size and of course become very hungry indeed sensitive areas on this would still be the things such as the tail the claws of the talons but again really fantastic detailing it's really hard and i can only hope that the camera is doing justice to this picking up all the necessities when it comes to the details on the raptor unlike the one that was scratching the side of its head this one here as you can see with its mouth now open you can get the sculpting of the interior of the mouth so things such as tongue and the areas of the very sharp serrated teeth are all now very visible here on the other baby raptor the teeth by the way are not super sharp Sharp would be if you saw this thing in person. Sharp not be necessarily the case when you are running your finger along the teeth. Not sure why you would be wanting to run your finger along the teeth. But again, there's a really fantastic paint job that's been done on this one. Carrying over, again, all the same cues that we had saw before. That diamond striping running down its spine once again. A nice combination of yellows and darker browns, darker, almost golden colors mixed and playing themselves almost as with the lighter cream color on the underbelly of the raptor here. This wrapper will plug right into the center square shape. And it's sort of a guess immediately as to which way it's gonna be facing, but it's actually gonna be facing away from the raptor that's scratching itself. And again, you just want to line this up. Just place that into place. Once the hole is in place, you just sort of have to put it on a slight angle. It's not completely leveled flat. And as you can see, now you've got two Raptors with only now a third Raptor to look at. The reasoning why also I did the review like this was twofold, one of which to get a closer look at the details on the Raptors, something of which would be a little bit more trickier if I'm just simply spinning the turntable. It would also be a good means for me to show you how these things plug into place when you eventually get this and luckily pick this one up for yourself. So the third Raptor, possibly my favorite of the three Raptor designs. As you can see, again, as we've looked at each and every one of them, they are all unique to one another, both in their pose and really ideal in their faces as well. While the one in the middle did have both eyes open and its mouth also open, this one here was scratching the side of its head, this one here is very much perched up, more alert, more aware or slightly aware of its surroundings but quickly learning its surroundings. This one seems to have a little bit more of a slightly different face, not quite the skeletal structure of course of its face but it definitely has a much more perched up appearance in its, its head sculpt here. Uh, you get, again, that really nice loose skin here. We had already discussed looking at the sort of animal, almost an elephant rhinoceros hide here that makes up the skin of the raptor. Here, though, is a great opportunity to kind of look at its gullet, where the skin has slightly become relaxed, a little looser, as, again, that's going to be the part of the head that's going to be rotating around. It has to be very quick to be able to turn its head and look at whatever it's going to be attacking or, in this case, playing with now, 
attacking, hunting, and killing, of course, later on. Paint, again, on this is fantastic. I love, again, the way that the eyes reflect off the light. You can almost even see my lighting set up reflecting off of the raptor's eyes in a very creepy like looking way. Having it looking straight at you. I mean, really, any one of these raptors, understanding, of course, that they were derived from uh, Crash's original artwork, but any one of these raptors would have stood, no pun intended, easily on their own as just side statues. Like, really, any one of these three could be statues I'd be willing to pick up just on their own. But the fact that you get three of them collective put together, you have a lot of personality, really, that is expressed with all three of the raptors here. Once again, Though we've already sort of covered this terrain, as the raptors will eventually cover their terrain. Nice airbrushing there that's been done in a darker brown, kind of borderlining the areas between the cream color. And again, that area of that golden, sort of golden caramel color. They've done a really nice job there of accenting areas around its stomach section. Or basically anywhere around like its spinal cord, its uh, spine right, running along the top there. Some nice yellows have been incorporated in there as well. I feel almost as if, like, looking at the side of the head, I'm getting a little bit of a read of a, almost like a greenish yellow that's making up the areas around its, almost quite around its nasal cavity here. Now, this mouth is closed. This is two raptors that have closed mouths. The one that's ro ro rolling around, playfully rolling around on the ground there is the only one that really has its mouth open. Again, it's got some fantastic detailing there. Perched or almost curled claws here. And then the one foot is arched up while the other one is firmly planting and holding the weight of the raptor up. This is by far the easiest of the raptors to put in place because you've got a circular hole and you've got a square peg indicating which direction these raptors will actually be facing. And then once that's in place, you've got yourself a finished statue ready to be put on a shelf. Now, as I had said at the beginning of this review, the Crash McCreary Baby Raptors Polyresin Statue is slated to an estimated ship date of Q1 2019. Most of the sites that have this one currently are showing it as a pre-order with a release date and ship date of February to March 2019. The best way to get this one for yourself, though, is head on over to Chronicle Collectibles website, where you can add this to your cart right now for $649.99 US dollars. If, if $649.99 99 seems rather high, but you do want to jump on board before the 300 limited release sell out. One good thing about buying this through Chronicle Collectibles website is that you can also pay this in a payment plan. Break this down to a monthly plan setup until eventually you pay off the Baby Raptors and they can be delivered right to your door. A beautifully rendered sculpt, sadly based on artwork that we never really saw fully realized in the Jurassic Park film for the reasons obviously stated. We didn't want the Jurassic Park uh, Velociraptors to look tame, so of course they wanted to keep the scariness still in place. And these Baby Raptors sa sadly never saw light of day. Thanks to Crash McCreary and, of course, Chronicle Collectibles for releasing this, we see a glimpse, a glimmer, and a physical entity of what something could have eventually looked like in Jurassic Park had they only used this one scene. Today we were having a look at the upcoming release, thanks to folks, by the way, at Chronicle Collectibles for supplying this sample copy. We were looking at the Jurassic Park Crash McCreary. This was the Baby Raptors Polyresin Statue. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Chronicle Collectibles reviews, there's a playlist just for that, Chronicle Collectibles. And make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below, because certainly more videos will be coming soon to this channel. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.